He is the chairman of the world's largest insurance market. Market, not company. John Nelson, such a pleasure and honour to have you here on NDTV. Thank you. In fact, Lloyd's is the only insurance market in the world. Absolutely. So it's the biggest company and the biggest market and a regulator as well. Yes. I mean, the Lloyd's market is basically a market which is the global hub for specialist insurance and reinsurance. <clears throat> and within the market, we have 90 syndicates uh, with capital provided by many of the world's leading insurance companies. And we specialize in B2B risk, business to business risk, catastrophe risk, and other specialized sectors. And the market's been going for 350 years. Uh, and we started with m marine as our shipping, which was our main business. And then it's gradually evolved into the extraordinary market that it is today. I know it has a special India connection as well because the original building, which was the coffee house, was apparently also the head office of the East India Company. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> but unfortunately, you don't have a very strong India connection in terms of investing here uh, right now. And that brings us to reforms, the fact that insurance has been on the government's agenda and it's likely to pass through. Uh, you, of course, have a special norm, so you're not dictated by the 26% going to 49% because you're a market, not a company. Correct. How does this work for you? Well, where we start is that Lloyd's at the moment does write reinsurance business offshore for insurance, in, uh, for Indian insurance companies. We are running, I think, at around $200 million a year. Uh, what we are keen to do, given the scale of the Indian economy and the requirement of the Indian economy, is to be allowed access for the Lloyds market into the uh, Indian market onshore. And we think that will be of not only benefit to Lloyds or the Lloyds market, but also of huge benefit to India. Because India, in a report we published recently, was shown to be the second most underinsured market in the world. And as Indi India has grown so dramatically in terms of uh, industrialization and commercialization is creating a lot of B2B risks which need to be insured and that is the facility that we believe that Lloyd's can provide. But how much of investments would these individual companies bring because I understand it will be a company specific decision. Yes we we are all Lloyd's does when I say all Lloyd's does is we operate a market so we regulate our market we provide the processing for our market and we promote the market and we provide the facilities for the international license network. Lloyd's, anyone who op operates in Lloyd's can basically write business in almost every country in the world. That's what we do. So it's up to our individual companies to make their own decisions. But what I can tell you is that uh, within Lloyd's there is a very clear view that India is a very good market for them they believe they can bring a lot to the Lloyd's market. We know that the Indian insurance uh, industry has been th through some problems. We believe that the Lloyd's market will help India to, uh, to, to basically make its economy more secure. I know your vision 2025 wants the focus coming in from emerging markets and India is a large part of that along with Brazil, China and several others. But you know, just coming back to India and your conversations uh, with the government as well, have you spoken uh, with some of our ministers who are present at Davos? There's Anand Sharma who is here clearly from the trade side. Yes, I, we, we, I have met uh, Minister Sharma uh, and the government are keen for this uh, bill to be passed uh, in Parliament. It's due on the timetable to go through in the second half of February. Uh, we'll wait and see. Uh, India, like the UK, is a very good democracy, so we'll see what the result is. And it is the loudest democracy at that, it uh, is. <laughs> according to Minister Sharma in one of those remarks. But let's get back to the investment. Is there some kind of number? You've got $200 million right now in the reinsurance market, which is limited. But is there a number that you can sort of gauge at this time from your conversations about the interest in India? No, because the, the, the market will determine. It's, it's hard to say uh, how that will develop, what pace. I would make a general comment though that I think that we in, in the developed world we expect the kind of insurance, the kind of B2B insurance to, to grow roughly in line with, with GDP growth rates. In emerging countries uh, which are underinsured we find that we grow significantly above GDP rates. So for example in South America our business in some places is growing between 20 and 30 percent compound per annum as the economy and as the businesses uh, begin to ensure these kinds of risks. So, for example, business inter interruption risk is something which Lloyd's provides. It's a hugely growing market because as the 
uh, supply chains become quicker and more sophisticated, the consequences, for example, in Thailand of the floods uh, were considerable. And ha fortunately, those uh, risks were insured. The claims were paid quickly, and the Thai manufacturers, which were many Japanese companies, were able to get back on their feet pretty quickly. That's the kind of paradigm we want to provide for India. I know you waited for a long time for this FDI and insurance to open up, 20 years uh, and yes. more counting. It's a long wait. But you've already got obje objections coming in. So there's uh, a panel which is uh, chaired by a uh, senior WJP leader, Yashwan Sinha, who has said that do not open FDI and insurance because it exposes India to global vulnerabilities. And that's really the big fear in India, that people will come in and the Indian economy will be held ransom because of global risks. Uh, I mean, I'm a businessman, not a politician. So I think uh, you know that the, the politicians will and w will determine within Parliament what they think is right. All I would say, as a businessman, is that in the insurance space, I actually believe this will provide greater security rather than more threat, uh, because we will provide greater protection for Indian business and Indian communities too. But there's a problem as well in the bill because one side companies say 26% to 49% doesn't do anything for us. It's right. as good as you know what it was because yes, we might just expand our capital, but we want 100% as ownership to come in and really establish our presence. Well, I think that the answer in pragmatic terms is one step at a time. Uh, I think uh, if you look at successful economies worldwide, uh, you will find that most of them uh, after a period of adjustment, which is in India is going through, the lower the barriers are, the greater the prosperity that those countries enjoy. And I believe that India, by opening up its economy, uh, as it is gradually, uh, it will benefit hugely, and particularly in the space that we're in. And the other major problem is finding partners in India, because everyone says all the good companies are taken. There's yes. a lack of credible partners in India. Yes. How would Lloyds address that for for the various companies under your umbrella? Well, I think I the market will develop uh, because the demand for this kind of insurance is going to increase. So what you will find is that businesses will be created, they, they will be bolted on to other financial services companies, and India is a very, very enterprising economy. And I, I, I think it may take a little time, but I think it, it, it will happen. So just to uh, you know, clear out the India subject, Lloyds is keen on entering India, will welcome the reforms, and you see that happening I in the next uh, few months. We do, time. we do. And also, I think uh, another point I would make, which is consistent with our vision 2025, is that we are keen to encourage uh, uh, carriers, insurance carriers from countries like India to come in and invest themselves in the Lloyd, Lloyd's market. And that is something that we would like to see. Okay, let's move on to other aspects here at Davos as well. And I know um, that uh, you have meetings with, uh, with Prime Minister Cameron as well, and you're traveling to India with him later on in the year. But his conversations and comments in Davos have created quite a stir especially when it comes to Britain uh, seeking a referendum on yes. its Eurozone membership. Yes. I mean, I think the, the, his speech, which um, obviously I listened to, I think was very reassuring for the British business community because what he made clear was that he, as Prime Minister and the coalition government, regard Britain's membership of the EU as front and centre, uh, very important for the economy and for the growth, of, growth prospects of the economy. He also, which is reassuring, uh, was very forceful on the point that he believes that the UK, with our other allies in Europe, need to get the EU uh, framework more competitive for business. It is, in many respects, over-regulated, too bureaucratic. And that is something which I think we, uh, as business people, really welcome. Now, the referendum, I think, you know, we live in the UK, in a, as you, you do in India, in a capitalist democracy. So we have to accept that the public have to have their say on this. And I think what he's done is to say to the British people, uh, we, I'm going to, I want you to decide, but I want you to decide when we know what the structure is going to look like, because Europe is changing greatly with the integration of, Euro, of, of the Euro countries and so on. And that means that uh, by, I think it's 2017, he anticipates 
putting a referendum which will be an in or out when all the facts are on the table. And I think that pragmatically is probably uh, necessary. It, it won't severely damage the business element uh, for, from being part of the Eurozone for companies which are British based? The, the, I think what he has said, the reassurance he's, he, he's given, will actually improve confidence in the, in, the, in the business community that the government is, is determined to make the case for staying in the EU. Obviously, uh, as I said, we're in a, in a democracy. Uh, there is some uncertainty as to where this is all going to end up. But I think that the, I, I do feel in the last week or 10 days that opinion is moving on. And I think people are beginning to see the benefits of, of, of our being a, a, a right on the inside of the EU. Okay, uh, very quickly, uh, the other conversation was about tax avoidance, and he raised that very strongly. Um, how yes. would you respond to that? Because India is well is struggling with that. We're talking about taxing the super rich and some of those corporates out there. Well, the UK corporate tax regime is extremely competitive. Uh, we are operating a corporation tax rate of 23%. So in my industry, in, in uh, I I insurance, for example, Aon, which is the world's biggest insurance broker, have recently moved their headquarters from Chicago to London, partly to be closer to the Lloyds market, partly because there is a, a, a very competitive tax regime. Now, uh, that I think is good. The other side of the equation, which the Prime Minister is referring to, is if we have a competitive tax rate, we expect big business to play by the rules and the spirit of, of the rules and pay their tax appropriately. And I think that is a message which uh, is, 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 is a sensible message for him to give. I know you as the chief uh, of the world's uh, largest insurance market play it down. I, I hear you drive a Toyota hybrid Prius uh, or driven around in, in a, a car like Toyota versus a Mercedes S-Class. Uh, I, I, yes, the, the Lloyd's car is a Toyota Prius. Okay. Correct. <laughs> that is quite ironic. But thank you so much, John Nelson. Such a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time and Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.